Okay, so priorities and relevance. So Cosette just got back from a little walk with these two, or these three rather. Three, three. <laughs> Um, we got Samson who's back in place. Uh, Samson and Soko were kind of doing their thing before. Dizzy just showed up because Jen just arrived. Hey What's up, Jen? Uh, today's Sunday. It's a little chill. Andrew's downstairs doing some work with some of the other guys. And uh, what we're going to be doing right after this is a little bit of socialization with some of the group, but making sure that we include Rolo and Willie because we're going to really, really work on... Uh, continuing Willie's like recall. Uh, we just posted a video on the Facebook page and also on the Instagram that shows his recall off of play, which is fantastic. This topic though, I think is pretty important. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of elaborate on what I mean by priorities, relevance, and I actually should have put in the title, not rushing it, which is something that people do quite often. Not rushing it. This is important. So Jake, hey, Jake and Doc are here because the owner has been working with Doc. So Doc is this guy right here. Jake is this guy right over here. Jake is has been her dog for quite some time. She also fosters dogs, so she has a couple of other dogs. Doc has been someone who's been kind of dear to her heart. She's done seminars with me even when I was a guest trainer before I started doing my own seminars and stuff and we've known each other for quite some time now um, she's always wanted to adopt Doc but you know because he had some issues and because Jake was a great dog but kind of had it morning how are you Lola from San Diego awesome 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 hope to get out there some sometime soon for some uh, dog related stuff um, but going back to this really quickly uh, hello to everybody that, that's on here on, on this beautiful sunny but nipply chilly Sunday morning um, so anyway uh, one of the, the big the, the big scary situations is listen like these two dogs have their their kind of like own issues and their struggles and they're great dogs but I don't want to adopt this dog and and have it not go well where they don't like kind of like each other because Doc is okay around dogs hey so even right there like he has a lot of um come here I'm try to get this kind of set up here sit he has a lot of like little tendencies where he'll be chill, but then like dogs that he likes, he just wants to go over and start humping. And the big thing with him, hey, stop, down. The big thing with him is that when you used to give him direction, so go down, he was the type of dog that would, if that would kind of lash out, you know what I mean? And as a result, it was like, wow, he's really good when you're softer with him and you're doing this, which is great in how you want to start things. But if he's a little defiant and says, listen, I know this, but I'd rather do this now, you can't be the type of person that's like, yeah, well, we don't want to kind of, we don't want to kind of set him off and do this. He has to know, listen, there's going to be times where I'm going to tell you to do something and you need to do it outside of what you want to do. So what we've been spending time doing is, is working on their impulse control, working on them taking direction, soft direction, firm direction, understanding, hey, you got to come over here now. I know you want to do that. We'll get there in a second. Then your reward is getting that later. And uh, getting him over kind of that, I don't want to push him too much because then he's going to lunge at me. And understanding, listen, we're going to push you, but pushing doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, right? So the, the, the priorities and the rushing is they just want to make sure, the owner just wants to make sure that they get along. And, and obviously that's our goal. So most people's idea of getting along is like they have to hit it off, meaning they have to play, they have to smell each other and like each other and it has to be up to them, they have to choose right away. It could go right. I think that's, a, that's, that's what I call a 50-50 shot. It's 50% it's chance that it's gonna go south and man, they didn't, they didn't hit it off. 50% chance that they decided they liked each other. But it's 100% up to them at that point. I personally don't like those odds, especially if I know like this must work. So I go a thing, I go about things a little bit differently. What I focus on, what's up King, how are you? Um, what I focus on is making sure that one, I am relevant, that is a priority, right? And that they are respectful first and can take direction from me. Because when I know that they can, thanks Jen, as uh, Willie Rollo and Maxwell about to get out. When I know that they can, um, 
it puts me in a position that when I start giving them more freedom, oh, nice, very, very nice. So uh, Fish ordered one of King, uh, King Canine's uh, combs, that's fantastic. Um, once I know I'm in that position, I know when I start giving you guys more freedom, when I start saying, okay, now I'm gonna let you guys play, if I see something's going wrong, or something's, ooh, I don't like that, and I kinda wanna stop that, I'm not worried or nervous that like if I'm going to want to stop Doc from doing something, that he's not going to like that. He's going to snap at me, and now I have no control over the situation. Ultimately, I want to get them to the point where they're making good decisions on their own. But in order to get that point, I have to coach them. I have to show them how to do that. So our priorities are these guys know how to relax around each other first. I could care less. I could give two you-know-what whether they like each other or not. First, I want to know that you can relax around other dogs, you can hold a place around other dogs, you can understand leash pressure, you can understand a little bit of remote pressure, you can know how to sit, how to down, how to take direction from me when you want to, how to take direction from me when you might want to do something else. That's an important thing right there, and that's when you go into, into proofing. It's really, during foundation stuff, you spend a lot of time getting dogs to learn how to do things and wanting to do those things. And it's very, very ideal. That's exactly what you want. But there will always be, just like in life, there's always someone stronger than you, there's always someone better than you, there's always someone that, um, even though I don't wanna believe it, works harder than you. All of that stuff is, is the reality of life, regardless of who you are. You need to know that no matter how much you work on getting your dog to want to do something, understanding how to do something. There will come a time when a dog would rather do something else and you need to work on being more relevant and more of a priority than what that something else is and having your dog understand that, having your dog be okay with that, right? So that's what we spent time doing. Do I want them? Do I want to introduce them in a way where outside of walking and just hanging out around each other, I see if they start playing or start not really being mindful of each other? Absolutely. But if I rush it, I have a shot or a chance that they might not hit it off right away and that I have a lot of undoing to do. Right? So what I'm doing is we're spending time, they spend time around each other, they walk around each other, they hang out around each other, they coexist around each other. They stop being mindful about who one another are because they're always together. They're not, what are you about, who are you about, because I'm not allowing that. You guys are coworkers, you're learning how to coexist. I could care less if when 5 p.m. hits, he's not the type of person that you would ask, oh, hey, you wanna go get a beer together. That's, that's fine, later on, you, you guys will grow on one another, right? So, hey, busy, stop. So that's really important for what I look for. Now, I'll start doing some work with him around socialization where I have him around my dog, around these dogs, around Dizzy and see how he does with socialization. That way if things are, there's some things I wanna shape up, I can address it, I can correct it, we can see how he takes direction and it's not associated with this guy. We start to do the same thing with this guy away from him and we kind of fix all the kinks and get all of that stuff really, really, really good and then when we know he can take direction from me when he wants to, he can take direction from me when he might not want to, and same thing for this guy, they know that, or I know, this is very I know that if I get to off-leash, I'm not vulnerable. Off-leash is not, man, you know what? They kind of didn't really listen to me on leash. They kind of didn't really like, you know, come to me or, or really kind of respond or kind of take that direction. And now I think for some odd reason that if I, hey, damn, that if I take the leash off, that they're magically going to like pay attention. You know what I mean? And like things are going to get better. It's like, I, I understand that you might be okay, but in the beginning, things cannot be on your terms until we have certain things in place. One of the examples that my brother gives, Andrew, Andrew, what's your periscope? A Travis, A Travis 527. Why don't you go ahead and uh, get on there real quick and just, uh, and just type that up. He gives a great example. So you don't have any smaller ones? We're mediums, man. We're mediums. We, we worry, we watch the girlish, girlish figure. We're mediums. There, there's Andrew right there. He just joined. Um, 
He's going to go ahead and he's going to, that's him. Guys, follow him. He does some great periscopes. He's going to start using catch.me to kind of get that going. Um, where was I? So one of the examples that Andrew gives is like, um, were, you, were you a summer camp teacher or something like that? What was? Uh, community service, I was a uh, counselor for uh, after school. So Andrew was doing some counselor work for after school kids, and one of the people told him, like, listen, I know you want to be friends with these kids and everything, but in the beginning, you have to set the precedent and, and, and lay down the law in the beginning. This is what you do. Get respect before friendship, right? And um, I, I think you, you kind of didn't go about it that way? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of just wanted to kind of slide in and be friends first. And what happened was kids enjoyed kind of hanging around him and stuff, but none of them respected him, right? So <laughs> he goes, nope. So what started to happen was, hey, you want to say hi to everybody real quick? So this is, this is A. Travis 527. What's up? Um, so what's really, really important is that you're like, listen, I don't have to be mean, but I mean what I say. And this is, this is, a, this is a priority. Once we have those priorities in, in, in check, once I know that you're responsible enough to take direction, you know how, how the world works, you know what sport you're playing and what the rules of that sport are, and then I can sit back and referee you, if that makes sense, right? And that's basically what dog training is like. A lot of times we try to rush into socialization. We try to rush into off-leash activities. We try to rush into, into these things where we're not in a situation that if things, oh, what's up, uh, Frost says, what's up, Michael's in the house, you heard? Yeah, yeah. oh, he's on, he's on here, um, sorry, if like, we're not in a position, nope, where we can get those things, like, we're not going to be in a position if something goes south to have a say, and when you don't have a say in those situations, dogs decide to take it upon themselves, hey, Stop. Down. Good. Dogs take it upon themselves or try to take it upon themselves to like handle things. They need to know, listen, you're playing this sport and, and you can try to win, you can try to do these things, but there are referees in the sport, right? And, and that's, I want to be someone that referees athletes, in this case dogs, that know what the rules are and what the rules of the sport are. Once I know that, then, I, then I'm going to ref you. It's extremely difficult to take a bunch of athletes that have played different sports and have had different rules, bring them into a setting, and then not tell them what sport they're playing and what the rules are. What you're going to have is competitive athletes that go, no, 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 this is what we do, this is how we do, and eventually there's clashing. And then there's, they're telling each other what to do. It shouldn't really work that way, right? So, um, uh, Laura, uh, uh, for you, that's where the 90-day sheet comes into play. What happens after the 90 days? Well, the 90 days... Stop. The 90 days puts you in a, in a place where you're going to get tested. And that's your opportunity to show who you are. You're going to follow through. They're going to try this. You're going to follow through. You're going to do this. You're going to get this. And that creates, it defines who you are. Once you get that, you're set. Right? So that's basically what you're, what you're looking, looking to kind of do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this bag here, and I'm just going to show you a couple things. So eventually, we're going to start doing more kind of like one-on-one -on -one stuff with them. Let me actually turn this this way. And I'm trying to flip this. There we go. Okay. So... Couple things that we're looking for. Um, no, actually, I'm just gonna do some stuff with them for a little bit, and then uh, I'm gonna go from there. Dizzy, come here. Please. Hey, down. What we're doing now is we're doing the early stages, being relevant, priorities. One dog's going to hold the place, I'm going to work the other. We're, we're a little bit farther or further along, I always mix those up so I don't know what's correct, um, than where we were, so I'm capable of working them together, but I'm still not letting them play and do their own thing because I'd like to get recall better with this dog, I'd like to get um, me giving direction when a dog would rather do something else better with this dog. And once those things are looking crisp and are looking good and I have the wax on, wax off in place, then I go, 
guys, do your thing because I know if I want to give you direction, you're going to respond. I know if I want to do this to you, you're going to, you're going to listen. So if I can be a referee and you're aware that I'm the guy in the pinstripes, do your thing. I'm not trying to dictate the outcome of the game. I'm just trying to go by these rules. And then that's it. So before I jump into there, don't rush. Everyone wants to rush. Set the rules. Define who you are. Get them really good. Do the wax on, wax off. And then when the dog, or you think, man, I, this dog doesn't know karate, all of a sudden you tell him to stand the floor, and the dog is, is, is doing it in real world situations. So that's, that's what we look for, right? Um, so what we're gonna do today is, I don't even know, I don't even have a plan, right? I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna have a placemat here, and I'm probably gonna go ahead and maybe kind of put one right over here. A couple things to set myself up for success, I know this guy gets really, really thirsty. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring him over with some water. Good job. This guy, even though he's chill, cool, and collected, has anxiety issues. So I'm gonna have him probably hold a place while I work Doc, and then I'm gonna have Doc hold a place while I work him. He's still learning to become driving. He's a good dog, but he's a dog that is not used to kind of working. Doc's really getting the hang of it and really, really likes that. So we'll see in a little bit kind of how uh, all this stuff goes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to place, um, Doc, place the boy down. Good job, buddy. And I'm gonna go ahead and get Jake, kind of see if he wants some water really quickly. sitting next to each other, but you're not minding each other, right? And before you know it, they've been living together, they've been doing this, they've been doing that. So by the time I get them off leash, they're mindful, they might say, oh, I can smell you this time, I can do this, I might want to play, but the other dog's a little nervous. So now if that one dog's nervous before he has to correct the other one and say, man, I like being around you, but you're coming on too strong, I can call that other dog, call him off, or I can say, hey, and actually interrupt, where my hey, actually does something, instead of being that type of owner that that says no, or says no, or says hey, or says hey, and the dog ignores them. I cannot be that type of referee. That's what you establish first before you sit back and you rep. You can't rep where people don't even know you're there, right? So that's that's basically the point of this scope. Um, what I'll do real quick before I get into this is if anyone has any questions about that, and that kind of doesn't make sense, um, we can. I've been having trouble flipping this. There we go. But if you guys have questions about that, that still doesn't make sense. Um, I can take like one or two questions, and then I'm just going to go into kind of working these guys. But that's my plan for Jake and Doc, right? And this is typically what we do with a lot of dogs, like you saw with Casper. Uh, yeah, I want to get him to the point where he's going to play and stuff. I really, really want that. But at the same time, like, I'm not rushing that stage until I get certain things in, in, in place. Same thing with Bella, right? We know she can play with dogs, but she doesn't know how to listen. I get the listening first before I reintroduce those things, right? So that's, that's kind of like how our program works. Um, that stuff makes sense, guys? They are, yeah, they're looking pretty good, right? Yeah, they're doing good. And just, and even, even for him, just learning how to see, like, Dogs coming in and out, walking by, and you're just hanging. You're not like, oh, I gotta go see what that's about. Like, no, dude, I told you, you, you just gotta chill, you know? So that's it. Um, if you guys wanna hang out and see what's going on um, after this, we can fade. It doesn't look like anybody has any questions, but you guys are harding away, and I love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's get these guys set really, really quickly. So, and dock in the front, so closest to me, and then we have Jake over there. 
there. So, all right, no questions. We're just gonna get hands on. If you guys wanna fall out and fade out, good. If you guys think about questions, that in the end, I'll do a quick little Q&A for you guys and um, be on the lookout for the next blog. Um, not sure which one we're gonna do yet, but uh, we're gonna be looking to give you guys a blog a week. So we have uh, two blogs that just came out there on our website. Uh, company name is Dream Come True Canine. The website is the initials DCTK9.com. That's the letter K and the number nine. Um, two blocks, first one was on positive reinforcement. The, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pros and the cons, the, uh, the value and the limitations of that. And then the second one was titled The Most Abusive Tool in Dog Training. And um, it's probably not what you think, right? So uh, we, go, we go into that then. We go into that, and um, the two blogs uh, seem to really, really be hitting it, hitting it off. Everyone seems to kind of like that. So thank you guys for taking the time to read. Um, and we're going to be looking to hit you with good stuff once a week, right? Okay. So to this, I'm looking to create drive. Still in the early stages of teaching these guys how to work and being happy with working, right? For anybody that's just joining, we do have other dogs in the room. That's what's going on, all right? But we're working with these two guys, Doc and Jake. All right. Okay. So, all I'm gonna do for my man Doc is just work on a little bit of recall stuff and then send it to place and down, right? So, first thing, is seeing what color he's on, what color he's on. Doctor, the toy. You work on the little eye contact, start challenging more. Yes. Good job, buddy. Good job. Very, very, very good. Doctor, good boy. Yes. Good job, buddy. Means 
that he can't get fed anywhere else, right? So little by little, we'll kind of work with this guy. He's a much more slower dog. He's almost like, we call him our stoner dog, even though he has anxiety. Now that he's kind of learned how to chill, he's a very kind of laid back kind of dude, but we want him to know when it's okay to be driving and when to not be anxious in other areas, right? So it's like learning when and where to use your energy, right? So. I'm gonna get closer with him. Jake, here. Good boy, but so good. So good. Yes. And he used to be a lot more slow and unsure. He's now figuring it out. He's not a driving Malinois, but at the same time, he's like, okay, I understand what you're asking. And that's the start. That's the start to kind of getting things to kind of work for him. So I'm very, very happy about that. I'm just gonna do like short little recalls with him, and that's basically where I am with him. Jake, here, good boy. That's it. Good job, bud. Yeah. Good boy. You can see he made a good choice over there. I'm going to acknowledge that in just a second. Good job. Jake, sit. Good job, bud. Yeah. Good boy. Good, so that's still a good decision on his end, All right? Jake, here, good boy, so good. Come on, bud, go. Yeah, there you go. Go, come here. And I don't really care so much about physical positioning. Jake, there you go. But I do need you to understand that if you make another choice, you're not getting fed that way. Yes. So pay attention, but I want to help him and give more information to be successful. We're also taking away, hey, place. So this is where I follow through with him. Notice what I was going to do there was I was going to pick up the leash, give a little correction, but yeah. And follow, this is hard for him, right? So even though we're trying to drive him up, this is very, very difficult, but both dogs have to learn this, right? I have to know that I can get direction from you no matter what. So these are the early stages before we allow them to just play together, right? Here, bud. Sit. Good job, so good. So good. And once we start to get him more food driven, you'll start to see more pizzazz, more enthusiasm, and more of a desire to want to do this. But because he's not used to that, we're taking it really, really slow with him, easy, and we're okay with a lot of not perfect things as long as he's getting the gist of it. Once he's getting the gist of it, I can't push too hard. Because he's a dog that'll be like, man, I don't know if I like this. So we take it nice and easy with him, right? Jake, here. Good job, bud. Come on. That's it. Very good. Yes. Oh, God. And I really want to start picking him up. You can see he's getting a little bit faster and understanding how to like how to want it. That's the very important thing. You, you gotta understand it. this is how you gotta want it, right? That's it. Yes. So good, really, really good. Good job, bud. Very, very basic, but we're doing two things at once. I actually might end his session relatively short, give him a little bit of a dose of that, because I'm starting to see it begin to come together, and just let him know, hey, the next time we work, you're gonna want more of that. So I'm really, I'm really excited to, to, to know that when I call you out, when you come in here, you're gonna be like, yeah, I want more of that. What's going on? So I'll do, I'll do one more kind of big handful, and then uh, we'll kind of just go from there. Jake, here. Good job, bud. Let's go. Very good. Nope. Nice. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> boy, you're so good, Jake. Here. Good boy, bud. So good. So good. Sit. Yes. Very good, buddy. So good. Eat that up. Eat that up. Yeah. Now, I also have to understand that like, because he's a softer dog in this respect, in this situation, even though he's pushy in other areas, if this guy was really, really not understanding how to do this, I would either have another trainer in here to help me with him, or I would put him away until we can get this done. And I would, I would practice this maybe with my dog, who I can say no to a couple of times with this guy without affecting him. If this was to be more of a regular thing, I was like, man, he's not where he needs to be. I can't have me noping him slow this dog down when I'm trying to drive him off. So I would have to see that. And as a trainer, I would have to kind of 
just tweak things a little bit, right? So these are all the things that we look for, and sometimes you learn that through making a mistake. You say, man, I tried to do it together, and he was, he was doing really good. I was trying to use more excitement with him, but it was messing him up. He's not ready as a result. He was messing him up, so we gotta separate when we do this until we get them to this point, right? And that's pretty good. Let's go, Jake. Come on, bud. Big place. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, you know that motion, yeah. So good. So good. So we've done some sending to place. And yes, and you can see when I placed him how he went there a little bit quicker. Recall still a little bit new for him. So he was slower there, but there he was like, oh, I know this. And kind of went through. So little by little, we work on things, and then eventually we piece them together, and you have a dog that flies. Good job, bud. So good. Nope. So I dropped a kibble over there, rolled, and I just milked him. So I'm gonna come over, take some questions. If you guys have any questions, you better still be harding. Oh, you guys are harding, appreciate it. Appreciate it. So that's what we got going on. If you guys have questions, happy to answer a couple. Look at that guy. <laughs> what a character. He looks like roadkill, it looks like he was shot. And he's just hanging off the dead, like the end of the road or something like that. Hey Diz, what are you doing, sleepyhead? <laughs> what are you doing, sleepyhead? Yeah, no problem, no problem. I hope they help. I hope they help. I, I just, good. I just try to bring common sense to dog training. I think that's, it's common sense has been lost. You know what I mean? And um, it's all I am. I'm not, like, I'm just a common sense dog trainer. Like, that's it. All right. Oh yeah, I love I love it too. I love it too, especially seeing like where they are. Sometimes it's actually easy to forget. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at look at my hands. This guy slobbers like crazy. Thanks, bud. Th th that's that's like the bad, the con to working a dog with food. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate it. Good. Good job, bud. So we're just gonna end this session. That's this is this is it right here. And um that is that. Looks like you guys don't have any questions, but you appreciate the work and just kind of being like the eyes on seeing some of the hands-on stuff. So thank you for the hearts. Thank you for tuning in and watching. I really appreciate it. We're get a, we're, you know, we hit a million hearts on Periscope, which is fantastic. Yeah, man, I, I really, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you guys can kind of see the process of how this stuff works. Um, we typically just work them for their food. We use treats. What's up, Randy, man? I'm seeing you everywhere, and I appreciate uh, all the love on all the different social media platforms. Really, really love it, man. Um, we, we use treats usually only if we're calling a dog off of something, like, like their food. Um, um, if, if I have notes, today's actually my day off. So, so I only have one day off a week, and today is my day off, but we're, we're super, super busy and swamped. Um, as far as phone calls and stuff, oh wait, nine one, I'm 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 bugging out. So nine one one, you're you're over in uh in Nassau County, right? Is that you nine one one? That's over because I I forget your Periscope uh, handle. If it's oh Hicktown, that's right, Arkansas. Um, I don't right now, but what you can do is um, you can settle. I thought it was uh, for someone that was coming in the other day. Um, if um, you want to get something set up, just go to the websites and have Jen handle that. I get a lot of people that are always like PMing and texting and stuff, and they, they, they want like you know phone calls and Skype sessions and all that. But um, I don't even know, and this is no this is no BS. I don't even know my own schedule. Like, like, I'm not good with scheduling. I've delegated that to Jen. Jen is fantastic. She, she handles the seminars, like, uh, alongside with Lindsay. She books all the board and trains that comes in. She lets me know when I have a private session, when I'm going there, they're coming here, what my day is looking like. I, I train dogs. I oversee trainers. I train trainers. I do all that stuff. Jen is the one that keeps the schedule and everything flowing because if it was up to me, I would tell you, yeah, yeah, I can, I can go see you for lunch in, in about an hour, and then realize that I also have a go-home session that starts at that time. I will always, almost always double book. So like, I'm best when I'm working, 
And, and I'm telling you, when I work, I go straight. Like, I go hard. Like, there's some days where, like, I get in at 7 a.m. And, like, my first break is at, like, 5 p.m. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, on stuff that is advanced trainer stuff. Oh, that's a good question. Deep theory. Uh, what you should do, man, in all honesty, is ask that on, um, on a dog behavior question Tuesday. What we're going to do, since we kind of dropped the ball on episode 32, even even though we have those questions, oh yeah, you can bring them in and place them. Even though we have those questions, and then you can bring these two down right after. Um, huh? I just brought them out. They both peed. Yeah, bring them down. Um, is uh, we're gonna do a, a double episode. We're gonna do 32-33 episode 32-33 um, for this Tuesday coming up. I'll have another ask your ask your uh, dog behavior question on our Instagram page, or you can ask that, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, I know I'm rambling a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll see you guys on the next scope. Um, no, Teddy, yes. Actually, right now, all of them are fixed. Teddy, who came to so socialization yesterday, was not. Um, usually, we, we, we recommend that they do. I did episode 32. Ah, okay, okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, PM me a message or something. All right, guys, later.